If you get hip pain when you're sitting, here are some tips to help alleviate and prevent that pain. Dr. Nicholas Mercer with you, Improved PT. One of the main complaints that I get from patients who are having hip pain or, or pain from hip impingement, FAI label tears, is a lot of pain when they sit. And for many of these people, they have to sit for prolonged periods of time, whether they are a student and they have to study for hours or sit in classes for hours during the day, several days a week, or if they work, you know, 40 hours a week, eight hours a day, uh, sitting at a desk, basically not being able to explore different ranges of motion, stuck in that chair, um, and a lot of times not the optimal position. So this can cause a lot of pain in the hips because when we sit, we are putting a lot of pressure through uh, a lot of the tissues in the back of the hips, so the glute max, um, and when we sit, those muscles aren't working. So they're very, very relaxed. The hamstrings are shortened. They're um, not contracting to stabilize your body, to stabilize those hips and, and the, the whole lumbopelvic complex. But also we lose activation in the lower abdominals and we have our hip flexors, especially the psoas, which is significantly shortened in um, the seated position. So when we, when we have these muscles that are stationary, there's no reason for them to contract. There's no reason for them to provide proper stabilization. So they relax, they get a little weak. In addition to that weakness, they also, again, are staying at the same length for prolonged periods of time. They get worse at lengthening, they get worse at shortening, they get worse at working like muscles should. So when we go to stand up, when we go to do other activities, even when we sit in a different position than we're used to, we get a lot of discomfort. And these muscular imbalances often do contribute to conditions like FAI, hip impingement, and labral tears, but also to other types of hip pain such as trochanteric bursitis um, and just overall hip discomfort. So what can we do throughout the day to normalize those tissues, make them better at working like muscles and make sure that we can have the proper stabilization, but also the proper flexibility and mobility in the hip joints. There's a few exercises you can start incorporating throughout your day, which I will show you in a little bit, but I want to start with the position you should be uh, working in. So we want to be seated straight up uh, in a chair that has a pretty good amount of lumbar support, and we don't want to be reclining too often. And the reason for that is when we recline, we lose a lot of the lower abdominal activation that we would have if we sat up straight, pull the belly button in, right? So that's number one. Um, the other thing we want to do is make sure the hips are at, at about 90 degree angle. Um, so that we have that pressure going straight down through the hips. When we get pressure at, at certain angles in the hip, it can make the joint capsule mobile in some places and restricted in other places, um, particularly restricted in the posterior capsule and then more mobile in the anterior capsule. And that will just encourage the femur to be um, pushed forward more into the, into the uh, acetabulum and cause a lot of those hip impingement symptoms. Um, another thing we want to make sure that we do is make sure that we're changing positions frequently throughout the day. So we, we like to say in, in the PT world, the best position is the next position, whether that means sitting to standing um, or just changing how you're sitting, moving positions, switching up how your legs are. We don't really want to maintain the same position for hours and hours on end. We want to explore different, um, different positions so that different muscles have different stresses on them throughout the day and we don't adapt to one position. What exercises can we do in order to kind of alleviate some of this hip pain but also make the, the hips work more like hips? The first one is gonna be a simple knee to chest. So we'll be pulling the knee to the opposite chest, like you can see here in the video. And with this one, it will just allow the uh, gluteal muscles to lengthen because they are in that shortened position throughout the day when we're sitting. And take some of the pressure off of the gluteal muscles too because you do have a lot of your weight pushing through those muscles and they can get really irritated. So just having, um, spending some time in those positions where we're stretching them, allowing them to lengthen is going to be very, very important. Another thing you can do, especially uh, again to help with the gluteals, 
is if you're just sitting up nice and tall, push your heels down into the floor. And there is really interesting. If you just think about pushing your heels down on the floor, you'll get a nice glute contraction. So those glutes will squeeze. And so we explored the one, the one exercise where we're stretching and now we can kind of start to get some activation and get them better at shortening and actually improve some of their strength throughout the day so that they're not just lazy and stuck in that one position throughout the day, not being activated. Another exercise you can do, especially uh, if you have a standing desk, this is gonna be the best, is a hip flexor stretch. And you just incorporate this throughout your day. Just bring one leg back and push that hip forward and stretch out uh, the muscle in that leg. You don't need to stay in this position for several minutes. Just incorporating it 30 seconds at a time throughout your day will allow you to lengthen those hip flexors that are normally shortened in the seated position. So while standing does lengthen the hip flexors a little more than sitting does, uh, we want to be able to get the maximum length out of those hip flexors too, so it's important to explore this range of motion when you're standing. Another helpful tip when standing is you don't always have to have all of your weight through both feet. You can shift your weight to either side and kind of have an elevation for your foot to come up onto so that we're, we're kind of shifting where that weight is throughout the day. But we don't want to stay in one of these positions for too long, and we want to make sure that the sides we're shifting weight to even out overall throughout the day. So if you're spending, let's say, one hour of your day shifted onto one side, we want to even that out to one hour on the other side. Now this probably isn't going to be an hour straight, but like if you switch every five minutes, we want to make sure that it's more or less equal on both sides so we don't get muscular imbalances. So those are just a few tips that you can use to help alleviate and prevent any hip pain that you may feel throughout the day uh, when you're sitting and having to sit at a desk and, and work for prolonged periods of time. It's definitely not something the human body was made to do, so we want to make sure that we um, mitigate those, those problems. Again, the body was made to move. We weren't made to be stationary, especially in a seated position in a chair. These tips are great. These tips will definitely help you throughout your day. However, they are not a complete solution to your problem. Okay? There's no magic bullet. There's no one or two exercises that are going to just make your hips all the way better. In order to get your hips to stop hurting, especially if you have hip impingement, FAI, or labral tears, is a complete solution to your specific needs. And that's why I've taken my years of experience both as a doctor of physical therapy, as an athlete, and as someone who has suffered from all of these hip impingement, FAI, labral tears, just overall hip pain, and incorporated them into a program called the Hip Impingement Solution, which you can access at thehipimpingementsolution.com. This program consists of 15 uh, very specific tests that you can do on your own. I've modified several tests that I've learned through, through my uh, physical therapy experience and made them into tests that you can do and evaluate for yourself, your deficits. Based on those deficits, that program will direct you to the exercises and techniques that are most likely to help you. Now, it's an incredibly valuable program. If you really want to get back to sitting without pain, walking without pain, exercising without pain in the front of your hips and in, in your hips in general, this is going to be for you. Whether or not you've, you're considering surgery or maybe you've already had surgery and your hips are still hurting, maybe your hips are hurting, you're just starting your journey, you don't really know what to do. This is the perfect program for you. So you can get that at thehipimpingementsolution.com. I will link it in the description below. If you don't think you're quite ready for that, that's no problem. Please go to youimprovept.com. We have a lot of free information on ending hip pain. And you can also check out the other videos on the You Improve PT YouTube channel. On the channel, we have a playlist for both hip pain and uh, hip impingement, and I will link the hip impingement playlist up above for you, and you can click that and see all the videos that we have on ending hip impingement. Again, there's no magic bullet, but if you can get some relief from some of these exercises and techniques, that is going to be incredibly valuable. So go check that out. Go to youimprovept.com. Go to the hipimpingementsolution.com to get the hip impingement solution program. And finally, get your hips working like hips again without pain, without surgery, and without painful injections or having to take pain meds. So thank you for watching. Please explore our YouTube channel and get ready to improve your pain, improve your movement and improve your life.